your referees are Steven Starr and Dwayne Anderson. And the fourth official is Armando Ferreira as the action is underway here in the League One Women's Game of the Week here on www.league1ontario.com. I'd like to thank everybody who's tuned in for this matchup between these two very strong teams. As it will be zero and picking up the ball in midfield as they try to close the puzzle. Play a three ball up the middle for McKay. Couldn't find it. Slowed in by Ayoko. Second chance won't get blocked by Oyoti. Is able to get a chance. He gets a left footer. Save there. It is a rebound. It's an early goal. A big first save by Patinas on Oyoti's shot, but the rebound fell right to the foot of the Durham United striker, and it's a quick first minute goal for Durham United as they are able to put it into the open goal as they are able to follow up the play. A big first save by Patinas on Aoki's shot. But this is a great start for this Durham United squad. Can't start any better than a quick goal against a team who has been very tough to score goals against. The goal will go to Kaylee Copeland. That will be her second goal of the season for Copeland. And she did a very good job able to put in the team. There to call that one up. Two goals for this season. Again, try and see if she can add to her tally here this afternoon. As the Sayoti is able to find her way between two red jerseys. She's going to continue her run. Referee trying to play advantage after the first collision. As Sayoti got held back there. He allowed some advantage, but when Sayoti's run, got no further. Again, four free kicks for Euro. Ball played in by Rosakos, unable to keep it in on the far side, however. Mark, okay, but a great ball playing for Rosakos, hard and low, but just out of the reach from the striker. I believe that was Cat who was coming in with a ton of speed. She got in behind the German defense, just couldn't reach in order to get that. And the score will remain one to nothing for Durham United early in this first half. 
I see a couple other games going on here in the background. Looks like we got a bit of a going on here in the As you see a lot of games going on here in the back side of oh. the room. As it's going to be a battle this is because the cats will be able to pick this one up. Keep the lines with Mutaj and Mutaj is going to win that ball as bad. It's now going to try and play it through ball up. Far ahead though to get the cone point. And if Kingos does well to come out of her goal and play towards her defense. Under some pressure. Oh, able to get it over for Zachary. She's the one who just created that chance a moment ago. She's able to hit it off the field for Makai, who's trying to battle for it, but she loses it on her feet. And she's going right back into zero territory as this ball's going to roll away right into the waiting hand. Zivi leading the standing so far with Zero just inching behind currently in fifth place, but they do have this game in hand here today. As they're going to try and see if they can pick up three critical points to jump up to third place on the lead one here standing with Durham's right in the middle of the pack, close to Alliance and Woodbridge. They're going to hopefully try and see if they can overtake them here in their match today. Dunkor try to get it over to Katz, can't get any further as Durham's going to try and clear it away, but that pass doesn't make its way to Iotzi, and now it will be settled in by Disa. Some good pressure coming in behind the chunk is he's going to try and foul for it. She's able to get a pass off to Katz. Can Katz get shot away? She falls down. The fans are asking for a penalty. They're not going to get it, though, as Katz has the hands up, feeling like she got knocked down from behind on that step challenge from D'Souza, but the referee, Nick Vagina, says no way, and play will resume with a throw-in for Hero and deep into the ground territory. As the action still continues, as there's a high ball played in, D'Souza will head it on. Play a little back and forth. Tries a nice little scissor kick in here. But it's gonna be an easy grab for Pachucci, able to grab on it. But good chances coming in from Deer United as they're finally able to settle into this game here, but they are down in third goal right now. They're going to try and see if they can play it to the work of the player from the center. She plays a little drive, but that's not going to be a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a Hit that ball nicely down the line. I'm a little bit of danger for another throw. The guy's gonna put this one up good. Good play there as Cat has to go over. She's playing for a hand ball with the arm up. The assistant referee was right there. He had a good eye on that one. And the play will resume. Possession. 
Montage or whatever. I want to admit to she didn't play a ball down the line. Copeland, I don't think she stayed on side there. And no, she didn't. It's going to be called four and offside as Copeland was in behind the center back. Monster Sivic. And we brought back four free kicks. They're going to try to attempt to play that one quick and short. But Durham was able to jump on that quickly. Short bench for Deer United. Okay, it's going to be a busy week for them as they got three. First, this is the first of three games this week for them. So got to make sure they're conserving their lineup and making sure that they put their best possible lineup out on the field for all three of the games. Throwing down the line, it's going to get blocked there by Dunkor. Dunkor's going to try and sell this one. She gets around Mitchell, and Mitchell will bring her down. And it'll be a quick free kick for d -Roll. They're just going to play it in short. It looked like they were. Now they will put the ball in play with Vilgrain. Finds Cap. Kai, her touch, can't find the player out onto the touchline, had a nice little run coming in down the line from Doncourt, just Makai just got a little bit too much of the ball onto the toe and couldn't turn the body enough to lay that pass off. At the end of the day, Dira will get the throw in right back around midfield. This ball flies its way over the foot, and there goes Katz battling it with, their, with D'Souza. It's been a good battle between those two here early in this one. As the ball will get played up now for Mitchell. He finds Ayotzi. Nice play from Mitchell. Able to split between the two right jerseys. And now she created herself some space down the line. Back now Zero United trying to see if they can go with a counter the other way. And this catch is going to play a through ball. Great ball up for Mackay. Mackay's going to get to that one first, and it's just wide of the goal. A great counter attack opportunity for Deere United as Katz played a perfectly weighted ball just over the defense of Durham United. And Megan Mackay was able to get to that ball first before the goalkeeper Petrucci. But just slid it right past the near post and this one. Game will remain one to nothing for Durham United. But Dero is inching closer and closer towards the goal. As it looks like maybe from the earlier challenge, Rizakos might have a cut or might have an injury. She's gonna go over towards the table and have it looked at. But Dero then down a player for the moment to notice. That goes for a substitute will end the field of play. So we'll keep you updated on that. As the play will resume, this 10 man Hero United making a great run down the line, and that's a great sliding challenge, able to block that cross. Uh, Donkor made a nice run down the line, but Disa slid out nice and strong to block that opportunity. And it'll be a corner kick for Hero United, their first opportunity of this game. Set up more towards the far post, leaving a huge gap towards the near post. So expect some runs to come in through that area. And this one's going to get logged up in the air. It's around the penalty mark. The player did get ahead on that. I think Makai might have got a bit on that one. But it's going to be a loose ball by the goalkeeper. As Durham's Babbitt's going to try now to go the other way. It's going to get a high ball up the post. The goalkeeper away from her. To be turned up right over it. Livingston trying to see if she can go the other way. And we have a little bit of back and forth. Finally going to be held in by Burke. Trying to play it off for Makai. We have a player rolling around on the turf for Durham. And it will be a free kick going against Makai. As getting back to her feet is McCartney. I'm going to look over towards the table and it looks like Rizakos is having an injury towards the right leg, it looks like. Having to take in and take in a look at by the training staff. And this one's going to get laid up by Patino Strong comes out of her goal and is able to clear that one away. Good job there from the Dero keeper. 
very tough when you have that huge area. A lot of players around you. It's hard to find that area to, first of all, get that height and speed, but find the gap as well through all the bodies to get the closest opportunity to get to that ball. And Patino did well to get to that one first in the air. As Durham looks like their strategy against this young team is just trying to get onto that run of Copeland and utilize their speed. But it doesn't work that well. Gonna be an easy grab for Coutinho, so she's gonna look to try and find someone to give the ball to. Jockey around midfield, she's gonna hit up McCartney's foot and find her way right back to her foot. McCartney down for Babbitt, leading score so far on Durham United, four goals so far this season. Gonna help with her players Mitchell and Copeland up top as Burke will try to work her way up the field. And the Brave under a lot of pressure, able to go backwards, however, and that's gonna slow this pace right back down for Deer United as they're gonna try and work the ball up the line. About just over 15 minutes in this first half so far, and it is one to nothing so far for Durham United over here in Edit on the one on here, woman broadcast here. And it looks like Rizakos is ready to return back on the field to play after she gets inspected by the fourth official. She'll come back a bit of a wrap on her. Knocked down, picked up a bit of a spur, possibly. It looks like she's all okay and ready to come back on the field to play. So both teams are back to full strength as play will resume with a throw in for Durham. a little bit of a funky touch off the turf and it's going to bounce away from down to left block that's going to allow Durham to get the stuff throwing. Nice shot there for down to right here. That one's going to be a very great match at least up here. Wait, that one out of the hero and I'll get a throw in. Nice throw down the line. But it finally 
drive his way all the way to the waiting player towards you. We've got some time, we'll bring it all the way back towards our keeper. One thing to keep an eye out on is there's some type of squad. We have a wide array of scores in the league. Don't just have to look at him. Hopefully we've got Iotsu and Babbitt on the wings. But we've seen players coming in like Mitchell and even Torchic who have gotten goals already here so far in this league going on Terra season. So that's just, it's just an added element to keep an eye out for the Deer United. You can't just look towards a single player like Stryker and you realize, okay, we shot her down, we're good. Now you got to look at all the players on the attacking front. You have all the capabilities to be able to strike you from distance. Get so much distance on them as this one's gonna go in for Cats in the corner. Good battle with her and D'Souza once again. And this time it's gonna be a foul going against D'Souza. A little bit too aggressive onto the shoulder. The shoulder challenges Cats went flying after the collision. And it's gonna be a free kick just near the corner flag for Dero United. As Cats is just gonna make sure she's okay before setting up to take this free kick. Shorter corner kick, you can almost say here. As the players are set up towards that far post, but once again, leaving that near post just wide and open and bare for any player. If they are going to place one in short, all they need to do is get a flick, and they're looking at an open goal. This one does hit off the player off the wall. However, they try to play that ball short. Iotsi's positioning there onto the set piece was key, and that shuts down that zero opportunity. No shit. Right, going all the way back towards Burke. Burke does well to get away from the first oncoming attacker. She's gonna put it back on the corner. As it'll be for Rizakos. Rizakos so can get any further as McCarty's able to take it away from her. Hopefully down the line. Can't get any further. She's right onto the back of the Euro player. She's gonna get a cool free kick. Jeff stop the deploy. Give a little update on to the Canada Women's World Cup game going on right now against New Zealand. It is Canada 2. Dealing nil in that game right now. For Canada as they're looking to advance towards the next round after their pool play matches. Make sure to tune in on www.league1ontario.com for all your information, rosters, match reviews, recaps, video photography, and more. 
all matches are recorded and available on the League of Legends YouTube channel by the next day. And keep an eye out for the highlight packs on the feature video magazine called The Fourth Man, focusing on spotlighting talent from all across the league. The great, great stuff going on here on the YouTube channel on the 12th Man broadcast. This week took a focus on Unionville's team. So you want to make sure to take a look at that last episode. As Kirchi is able to get back onto her feet, but she's able to continue. Always a great sign to see. Maybe she just got a little bit of the and got the wind knocked out of her. But most players will get back onto the field. And the team here will turn up their quick water break and play will resume with a free kick just onto the edge of the penalty area for the Durham goalkeeper. And no, she didn't. Peace will come back up to the field of play in Copeland. This one out. It's a good battle there with Vilgrain, but Vilgrain will be the player to knock it away from her as Burke's going to play this one in down the line. Babbitt and Rizakla battling for a quick. It's going to go out for throwing, and Babbitt's going to lead this one down for McCartney to throw this one on. Throw this one down the line for Babbitt. It's almost a little bit confusing sometimes when you hear the whistles coming off from the field in behind us. You almost try to think, oh, what's the call here? What's the call? And this one didn't see anything, and you realize it's the other game going on. Now they have a goal kick on here. Now for Hero, they're going to play this one in short. I like to play short, utilize their fullback as they try to clear this up out of danger, but Babbitt is able to keep that ball in front of us. Durham. And the referee was the one to make this call, not the assistant. That one's going to be just a couple of steps away from that area. Great opportunity on this one. It's almost like you can almost go for a cross style shot onto this one. And you can put a lot of danger into that goal area for this free kick. Going towards the far post. There's the header, but they can't direct that one onto goal as Carvery was able to find herself a wide open header on that one, but she wasn't able to redirect that one down. Let's set itself up. How long? way up the field, allow the Dero United players to get back into position and reset. Making the time into the back line, there's Mutaj. Playing it up, trying to find Babbitt onto that pass, intercepted by Rizakko. But Durham, the sport chair is able to win that one right back for Durham United. But they're going to try and bring the ball off on the near side of the field. Out of space here for Disa. Carry this one out. She's got Diotti in front of her, but that pass is just a second too late as that one was taken behind the oncoming run. And that one shut down that opportunity for Durham as Disa just made a nice little run from the left to the back position. Going to catch that run of Diotti. Here's 
the whistle and then you almost see the bullet. Let's play when we resume here as we got a good run coming down to the left side. As they continue to go forward, trying to find the run of Makai. Can't find her. As Kirchi is able to get down and make the save of the cross. As a cross opportunity to get from that run off the left side of the first lap. Yeah. And wasn't able to find her. Just over the half an hour mark. 15 minutes plus time. Let's go. We have a few minutes of stop time for less than sure. As Durham United leads zero. United one to nothing on a first minute goal from Kaylee Copeland. On the opportunity of the game, Durham United was able to put in a rebound. Off a nice save coming in from Coutinho. So that's what separates these two teams, but it's been a very exhilarating affair ever since. The Deer United has been continuously the push on this Durham United goal to try and see if they can tie this game right back up. Good battle in midfield as it'll be a nice move coming in from Chung as she's going to try and work her way up. She continues with the ball as she's able to get through the two attackers. She's able to pass it off now to Abreu. Bring it down the line for Rizakos. Rizakos has been deadly coming in from the left flank. She's going to play another ball in, but this one is a little bit too close towards the goalkeeper, Petrucci. He's able to grab that one. As you expect a little bit better coming out from the midfielder as Abreu tried to hold back this on from the run out of Babbitt. Couldn't slow her down, and the run will continue as she's going to try and play a through ball and find Copeland. But Copeland is offside, however. And Babbitt not too happy with that one. And Copeland having to look at the re assistant referee on that call. Couldn't believe that call being brought back onto that run as the referee is now going to use this opportunity to talk to Abreu. Very fortunate she didn't receive a yellow card for that little grab from behind. As play will resume with a free kick just outside of the penalty area. We have an injured player in behind, and it is Rizakos once again. Try to continue from that earlier injury. Not able to continue. And that's going to lead towards a Dero United substitution. Rizakos will exit the game. Olivia Rizakos entering the field. Number nine, Nikola Golin. So Go Nikola Golin's going to come into the game to replace the Rizakos on the left flank. The North Toronto Project, one of the younger players here on this Deary Net squad. Very accomplished in her own youth ranks in the OPDL. She's made the jump here towards the League One Ontario this season. And she's going to try and see if she can provide herself some impact going on to the left side as the first half continues on. Makai trying to control that one off the throw and trying to battle her way off from McCartney. She's able to get away from her. She's going to play a low drive as it's continued to bounce around. Finds the way for Chung. Chung's ball almost squeaked its way in through. You saw a little bit of ping pong going around on that edge of the goal area. And Chung was able to find on that one a low drive. It seemed to elude the goalkeeper, but couldn't find that back in the net. Once again, another close opportunity coming in for Deer United as they were just inches away from finding that goal. Trying to work this one up for Disa. Disa just gonna try and see if she can shield it. Try to see if that ball can roll all the way out past the goal line, but ran out of space and pressure. She was just forced to clear it away for throwing. As Zero will get a throw in deep into Durham territory. They're gonna place one in down to the corner for Katz. Katz backs it for Donkor. She's gonna place one in to around the penalty mark. Finds the way over to Mackay. Mackay's gonna try and build, bring it down. She can't find a shot. There's a hard collision between Mackay and Mitchell. And it will be a free kick going against Deer United as Mackay jumped up hard and got into the body of Mitchell. Charles Mitchell, she got a little bit of an arm on her. Katz is just gonna make sure she's okay. Good sportsmanship there. Oh, 
ball is going to get played in short for D'Souza. Finds Carvery. Carvery's going to lob this one in, try to get it over to Iotsi. Iotsi's going to hustle to keep this one in play, and she will get to this one as she plays a high ball over towards the far post, and that's just going to come out the other side, and Golan will just clear that one away for throw. Some good possession right off the throw. And as Copeland's got a couple players right onto her back, she's able to find a teammate in Mutash. The ball's going to get over to now to McCartney over on the far side. Golan, though, strips it away from her, but she puts herself back in towards danger. And there's a player going down just onto the edge of the area. And that's a huge free kick opportunity for Durham United. We just see a missing composure coming in on that back line. You normally expect to see from Deer United to put that one back towards the middle of the field. And a turnover opportunity led to an obvious opportunity for Durham United to get a good, a good chance onto the goal. And with that player getting knocked down, they have this chance here with this free kick. It's like three or four players into the wall here for Coutinho's. They come for the left footed strike. Right into the wall. The ball still loose up. Takes a deflection. And it's a goal. An unlucky bounce as they got a shot in. It deflects off of a D row in player's head. And it goes into the opposite direction of the goalkeeper Patinos. And Durham United will increase their moves to nothing. After that one, I believe that was Portia who got the final touch on that one. We'll wait for the confirmation on that one. And good ball coming in from the wall. Found its way in for Torture and her shot. And just took an unlucky bounce off of the head of the Deer United player. One goalie won one way and the ball went the other. Torch's second goal of the season as well. She joins Copeland into the book here as we're winding down to this first half. Been good so far. Well, collision there. That's Copeland going down hard. She's able to get that ball up to Iosi. Iosi's going to carry her forward on the left flank. She's going to wait for some players to get to the goal area. Find anybody that gets hard and low. Right towards Patino, who's going to use her entire body to throw him down. It looks like she fell awkwardly onto the throw. As the goalkeeper down the play, still is going to continue. As finally it's going to get blown dead. And it looks like when Patino went to throw that ball, it looks like she lost her balance a little bit. She put a little bit more of the body onto this one. And she fell very awkwardly, and it was a very strange throw coming out from her. I'm not too sure, maybe she slipped onto that plant foot. But what did happen there? But both goalkeepers have been taking a beating here in this first opening half. Another break. Shaking off the left leg, and that's what I looked like. What happened up onto that plant leg? Just twisted it awkwardly when she tried to plant or throw. It's always interesting, especially off the turf, when you can have that that foot just sink into the turf a little bit. It almost like your foot doesn't exactly settle properly onto the turf as it normally would on a grass field. It looks like she's gonna pop in this that is the Dero United keeper. And although both boys have taken a couple knocks here, they are both still standing and they will be here as it's first 
Aston Tears as Durham United lead Zero United 2 to nothing here. Honestly, on Ontario One Squad at the Lamar Sports Complex in Scarborough, Ontario. Durham providing some good sportsmanship. We will give this ball right back into the possession of the Dero United and play will resume in some midfield. There's Vilgrain. Gives it back now for Burke as they're going to play a low 1 2. See if Vilgrain can find himself a little bit more space. Abreu finds Golan. Golan's going to try some full work and now she's going to utilize her speed. Golan's breaking through on the left side but just too far ahead. And Golan showing a little bit of a glimpse of what can we could see in the future for this League One Ontario player. As she did some nice footwork, able to shake and bake a little bit to get around the defender and then utilize that pace to blitz through down the left wing, but just had that ball and roll away from her. There's a high ball around the midfield. It's going to bounce around and it's going to be headed on by Sarcevic. Second ball, though, well, she's going to have to hustle to get back, and she's going to get some help from Livingston to clear this one away. And Durham United will find themselves with the throw. Some good one two touches here, and the ball will resume back in the Durham possession. Two to nothing here for Durham over. Dear United, it's Copeland, and it was Torchia who picked up the second goal off of the deflection on a free kick. As this ball is going to slowly roll its way in for Coutinho's. As we're nearing that 45 minute mark, you can imagine there'll be a good number of additional minutes coming in from the fourth official Armando Pereira as, as Petrucci is yelling at the referee there doing her goalkeeper a responsibility, yelling at the referee to remind them how many seconds they can hold on to the ball. As finally it's gonna get laid on, and here comes an opportunity as this ball finds its way for Mackay. Mackay collides hard with Carvery, and Carvery is very slow after that collision with Mackay. As the play will get blown dead, and not sure, maybe it could have been the straight elbow connecting with the head, possibly, onto that one as the two bodies collided. As this training staff, probably some of the busiest people out here on the field in this game so far, comes back out onto the field. Sports Engine is the official technology partner of Ontario Soccer and the leading provider of sport life management tools for youth and amateur sports. Check out sportsengine.com to see how they can help keep your club running in stride on and off the pitch this season. Now this is Sports Engine. Teams do resume play here earlier on this week. Deer United, this is the first three games this week. They're back in action at Unionville this coming Tuesday. More traveling to the Oakville next Sunday for another match as Carver comes in. Shaking a little bit on her way back up. Hopefully she'll be okay. She's going to come towards the sideline and she'll get some nice applause coming in. United will be back in action next Saturday. They're going to travel to Ottawa to take on the OSU Force and to what's going to be a big match for them to come to the standings. And the injured Durham United player will come off the field to play. We'll have to see if she'll be able to continue. But they'll be down a man here for this throw in. And we've seen Donkor. She's got a deep throw in and she's going to be able to find Mikhaev's throw. There's a touch there. A bicycle opportunity. And it looks like it might get called back for a high foot or a dangerous play there. As Cats went up high to try and see if she could get the reverse to put that one to the back of the goal. Here's Patricia's ball straight to the foot of Donko around midfield. She's able to find Mackay as they're 
Diros can continue to press, see if they can pull one back. There's a low chance there, but D'Souza, she's able to get to that ball first, and she's just gonna clear that one away. Almost a dangerous through ball, you could see. Finds Vilgren off throw. She's got some time. Actually, gonna play this one towards the far post. There's a little miscommunication, and it almost gets put in by Golan. The goalkeeper came out, screamed keeper for that one, but she collided with her own defender. And in that confusion, that ball got free, and Golan almost found its way into the open goal. But D'Souza able to track in behind, knocks that ball just off of the goal line, and this game will remain two to nothing. The ball off the corners and trying to clean the crossover. Can't get it forward and it gets cleared away once again for another Hero United's throw. It's going to find its way over for Mitchell. Ty's going to battle it into the corner. Passes it over, gets through the legs of Dunkor. And Livingston's going to come over with some help as she tries to play that one down the line. It's going to be a deep throwing now for Durham. They're going to be trapped in their own area. And they're going to try and see if Dero can press and force a turnover as they're deep in their own end. There's Katz doing her job. As she looks like it will get called for a little bit of a holding here as we're going to have a substitution coming in as Harvey will exit the game. And we've seen a player coming into the field play. Didn't see which number that was, but we'll let you know in just a moment. Looks like some tactical switches in as is going to go over to center back. Iotzi is going to go to the left back. As you don't even normally expect to lose a center back into the game. As it'll be coming into the game will be Yara Simmons. Uh, Simmons, she's got three goals so far this season. She's going to try and see if she can help Copeland on to the attack as the substitute. Entering the field, Yara Simmons. Kai can't control that one as Iotzi tries to play that one off. But Kai though, able to block that one as that ball is just going to bounce around. Dero has to play and they do a very good job. Does Livingston able to hit it on to the oncoming attack from Simmons. And they're able to win a throw. Katz, she's going to try and battle with D'Souza. We've seen this battle all first half two, between two very physical players. This time will be D'Souza gets it out. And now Babbitt's going to come racing through. But Livingston is able to just get a touch on that one as Babbitt almost found her way in behind the Giro United defense. And this one's going to go to battle with it, Bill Green. Bill Green going to try and play on that one. It looks like it took a deflection. It's going to be another Giro United throw. And Katz once again plays a great ball, finds Chung. Chung tries to work her way through. But Kai tries to hop in there, but there's Disa able to shot it down. As she is, did a great job of shutting down that one. From the two players. Up zero. Just rolls off her foot as there goes the full time whistle. And this first happen is Durham United leading Euro United 2 here in this League One Ontario Women's Broadcast. <laughs> and welcome back everyone to Lamoureux Field here for the second half in this League One Ontario Women's Broadcast as Durham United. Lead Dero United two to nothing. Goals from Copeland and Torches separated, and again they come out quick and fast. Do Durham United? They got that goal early in the opening minute of the game, and they were able to put some good pressure on in that entire first half. Dero United was very strong as well during the middle stages, but they weren't able to continue it as we progressed on. 
Thank you, thank you everyone. And before the broadcast, I apologize for that the first half. Having some internet difficulties here at the field. But we're back here for the second half. And we're ready to keep on games are going on here. Second half. We have some substitutions going on here. At Durham United will be making some substitutions. Leaving the field is number 14. Sorry, McCartney left the field to play in Ocean Park. Number seven comes into the game. Substitution for Vero United. Going on here. Leaving the field. And Euro United Number also 20. made a sub. Jada Brave has come out of the field. the field. And entering the game, Olivia Bittoni Olivia Bittoni. comes into the game. So a change into the central midfield for Euro United. And a change into the right back position for Durham United. As you have a chance coming in through as Mackay is going to try and race him forward. Aoki is able to drop back. She had to go back from a left back position after the injury to Carberry in the first half. And there's a good cross by for Patrucci. Is able to get up high. She's able to make the catch. Carberry went down with a little head injury. Had to get twisted it off. And Durham without a, another center back opportunity on the change. Have to make some, some changes in their lineup to be able to counter that injury. Go back from a left back position after the injury to Carberry in the first half. There's a good cross by Patrucci. Near the, it was the opening minute and near the end of the first half, where the two goals. Second goal came in on a nice little free kick just beside the penalty area. It hit off the wall but deflected right to Torsia. She shot it from distance and it took a deflection off of a Zero United defender and to the opposite corner of where the goalkeeper Ali Patinos was going in. And that's how we got this 2 0 lead for Durham United. They're coming in with a record of 2 1 and 3. Two wins, one loss, three draws on this cloudy. Saturday evening as Barr is going to put this one in the air. Parr trying to set it up for Copeland. Can't find her. Now there's a second goal here. That's Torture trying to hit this one out. Pizzoni, she's a very physical player in the central midfield with some great ball skills. You look towards to her to try and see if they can work it forward. They try to play it down the line. Can't seem they can find anybody. It hits off a of Golan and Parr have once again. We'll get yourself another throw. There's a Tony trying to work it out. Pass it towards Golan. Golan. Nice little touch from Katz into the midfield four, but Tony, those bright orange boots sticking out. She's able to get away from Mitchell. Parr's coming in for some support. She's able to take it away from her. Does Parr. And Parr try to switch it over to the far side of the field. Finds Simmons and it somehow finds his way towards her. Passes it back to Ielce. Okay, I'll see if a deep ball up, but that's going to go right to Patinos. But it looked, she looked a little bit more comfortable than what it looked like as Copeland came in with a lot of speed. It was just a near second too late. As here comes the through ball the other way. Makai is on side. It's a one on one break. Makai trying to see if she can get away from the defense of Disa. She's forced to pass it back though. Cats. She's going to try to go from distance, but can't get the accuracy on that one. And she shoots that one wide. Durham United has been with us a little bit of a slow start to the league on the season. But they are able to get this. Hit pretty much three points and will jump back up into the top few places in the league on Ontario standings due to the former league on Ontario champions. And they kind of try and see if they can work out here against the Deere United team who is with a game in hand. I've been very strong here, sitting into that top half of the standing as well for in behind Vaughn Oakville, OSU, and London. There is a collision right in front of the Dero bench. They disagree with that call completely. But disregarded as I hope he will play one in. That's a dangerous switch right there. Golan read that one, but just has that ball fall away from her. Golan was just inches away from getting that one. Golan having to come in as a substitute midway through the first half to replace the injured Olivia Bizzoni. Check that, sorry, it was um, Olivia Rizzato who was injured on the left side and Golan came in as a substitute for her. She's able to get the ball now. Try to play a little bit of a one-two into the top but it's gonna find his way through as Copeland's gonna battle with Bitsoni but it looks like that ball bounced up and hit the arm of Bitsoni so it's gonna get brought back for a free kick. 
against Fury. And I've had themselves a very busy week. Three games this week. This is the first of three. They're going to travel to Unionville this coming Tuesday. Take on the Millican. And they'll be going to Oakville to play against the Blue Devils next Sunday, June 23rd. And there's Simmons able to get onto the end of that one. A little bit of confusion in the back line as that free kick somehow found its way through everybody. And just looked like everyone just hesitated and not just allowed Simmons to float in and pick up the goal. That will be her fourth goal of the season. Guys, Simmons able to put that one in forward. And unbelievable. It just looked like the Dero defense just fell asleep for a second there as that ball got played in. Just everyone just got caught on their puppy. And Simmons was able to come in behind and float that one past the keeper. No chance for Patinos in goal. But I'm 100% sure Dero United is going to want that one back after that one. And there's referee saying all ball there. Play will resume as Torch is able to take it away. There's Mutaj. Motash is going to break it free for Babbitt coming in down the right wing. There's a hard challenge as it goes in forward as it's going to hit off a Burke for a corner kick as Babbitt trying to get in forward onto the right side. Babbitt's going to lead this one for Torchia. Players are set up towards the far post except for one player standing directly onto goalkeeper Patino. trying to see if she can close down the distance and be a little bit of a nuisance onto the D-row keeper as we have an in-swinging type of kick. This is going to go towards that far post, gets through everyone, still bouncing around there. And I think it got cleared away by Chung. They're going to try and go the other way. Cass is able to pick it up. She's going to try to see if she can get a counter. She's got Makai racing forward onto her right. And this time she's going to try to play it up for her. But that one doesn't work its way through D'Souza, who was the last player back for Durham. And Makai's going to continue to put the pressure on her as they hit it off of her, the zero player's leg, and wins Durham the throw. She's going to try to see if she can get a counter. She's got Makai racing forward onto her right. Trying to play a little one-two off the throw. Not able to find anybody. And it'll go up for a throw. Thanks to League One partner, Peel Regional Police, for their continued support of women in sport. Know that you can always kick off your career with Peel Regional Police. It's more than you think. Visit Please, to find out how a career in soccer and policing go hand in hand. Lisa trying to play this one up the middle. Both is able to get ahead on this one. It's going to bounce around, and Livingston is going to work with Dilger, and he passes one back. But Doncor almost got that one taken away from her as Mitchell now is going to pick up the loose ball into the midfield. She's going to try and streak by Golan, but Golan is able to hold her footing. And now Golan's going to carry this one up. She's going to send a food ball in on the right side. A little bit too far away for Doncourt to be able to get to pick that Vilgrain. And that's going to be cleared away by goalkeeper Petrucci. There's Doncourt. Max Chung over to Livingston. He's going to try and get this one up. Can't find Vilgrain. Vilgrain's going to try and win that one up. But Motaj is able to get away from her and pass it off to Ioti, who's going to take a few seconds, relax herself before passing that ball along. It's Tony. Little touch there, coming in from the striker. And I'm not able to turn around. Babbitt's coming from an offside to an onside position. She's going to get called for that, and this one's going to go back for a Dero United kick. It's 3 to nothing though, for Durham United over the hometown Dero United squad here. Hero, very one of the toughest teams to be able to score on all season long, but Durham has just figured out a way through him here today. And you're going to have to look towards the goal scores now to step up to see if Hero can start to pull this game right back. Hard down the line. Babbage trying to turn around. Hooked away as Burke puts a hands up claim if she wanted, and the assistant referee agrees with Burke as Hero is able to win the throw in. They're not able to get anywhere with it as Mitchell's going to try and see if she can get it out. But good, some good pressure coming in from Bettoni is able to take it away from her. Bettoni gets that pass right back, plays it up the middle. 
And a shot coming in from distance, almost over the goalkeeper. Katz was able to get some distance onto this one. He got some good power on that. Looped it over the goalkeeper, but just over the crossbar. starting to fall down here in the Scarborough Mountain area. The wind is going directly towards the camera here on your street that hole. It's starting to pick up here and when that's supposed to happen, anything that can happen in the game. Find a nice pass up for Bitoni. Is it off to Bill Green, who's under some pressure from Oakland, who's rushed all the way back to help out her defense? Yeah. Akai trying to see if she can turn and pass it off to the wing. Overturned her body, however, find a run on the player on the far side that was down court. And now Simmons is going to try and see if she can come the other way. She's going to play a through ball up. Trying to find Copeland. Copeland's battling towards two bodies and she's able to come out with the ball. Montage, her pass gets blocked. Finds it for Torchia. Now Torchia's gonna send it through. Too strong though to get on to Babbitt. Very dangerous area. Even if you do have to throw it in their own your own area, it's very easy to contain the opponent team here and see if they can force a turnover. And that's what Mitchell's able to do right here. She's going to try and work her way into the penalty area, but gets knocked away from her. As said, they would much prefer a corner kick, but they're going to get it thrown instead. They're going to take something quickly. Seeing Babbitt, why don't Babbitt trying to see if she can spin away from the pressure coming in from Pizzoni, forced to go all the way back to Disa. Iotzi. Iotzi still going in forward. Now she's going to try to across the diving leg there. Coming in from Doncor, able to block that one as it finds its way back into Iotzi who tried a second opportunity and it hits off. Oh, I believe those cats and it goes out forward. Corner kick for Durham. with a staggered setup here for Durham setting up on this one as this one's going to go around the penalty mark. Vilgren's able to get a touch on that one but Durham will regain possession. Can Parr put this one back in? Parr will get towards the far post. No one there but Starchevich. He's able to hit it on. Here comes Vilgren hustling. Vilgren's trying to hustle her way through D'Souza but D'Souza holds her ground and Durham is going to continue on the attack here but there's no one inside in the penalty area as that's going to be easier for Patinos they come out of her going grab. <laughs> Tony into the midfield. That's a dangerous pass that gets intercepted, and now it's Simmons. She picked up the third goal from coming from distance as uh, she tries. It doesn't trouble continuous in goal at all. This is just going to glide its way past the goal. Durham United will travel next weekend. They're going to be going to Ottawa going against the OSU Force who have had a very strong start to the season next Saturday. So make sure to stay, stay updated on that one and all the matches in League One Ontario for all your re information rosters, match previews, previews, recaps, video photography and more go to LeagueOneOntario.com. All matches are recorded and available on the League One Ontario YouTube channel by the next day and keep an eye out for the highlight packages and the online video magazine called The Twelfth Man coming out every couple weeks, focusing on the spotlight talent from all across the league. So this week uh, on the 12th man, we got to take a look at the Unionville Milliken squad. But so keep an eye on that one and learn more about the players and what keeps them driving on as the season progresses. The high looping ball 
Gonna try and see if Cats can work against Deesa. Try to get to that one. She's all over her back. Is Cats, but Deesa does a good job just bodying her away. Holds her line and is able to work with her team. to get it up the field, but it finds a way straight to Golan. Golan lost the shin pad, but she's gonna continue to go on here. Sony finds Burke. Burke all the way back for Starchevich. Starchevich down the line for Golan. Golan trying to put back on that shin pad. Was caught in between putting it back under and trying to retrieve that ball, and she can't do either. And it will go out for a drum throw. Jeremy Knight, three draws already this season against very strong squads in Woodbridge, Unionville, and Aurora. Two consecutive draws coming into this game. And it looks like we got a handball. As uh, Kai try to control that one off the throw. Just a single loss to the Oakville Blue Devils. Through the League One Ontario Champions. It always seemed to be that team who always just find themselves into the end of the season, near the top of the standings. But when it comes down to playoff time, they're able to come out strong and show their full squad. And they're able to try to show so here again here early in this season. Going on, on to just hanging on to the top of the standings. As Parr will be the one to set, be on the set piece. As she doesn't get a good boot on that one. But it finds its way up to the other side. Parr Mota should be able to settle it. Souza tries to throw ball in by Livingston. Not able to. Now Zero United. They might have an opportunity to come the other way. And here we go. But trying to spin around with Chung. She's not able to get anywhere with it. But Zero's going to try and continue with it. With the Sony. She can't get, get it forward. And now Babbitt has a ton of space in front of her. She's going to switch it over. Great ball down for Simmons. Simmons, though, can't get through Livingston. Second player coming in for some support. That was Torchia. Able to get it over to Simmons. Simmons going to try and see if she can get across. She's going to slide, but she ran out of space as it goes by the goal line. And it's going to be shut down for a goal kick. Here comes the substitution coming in now for Durham. They'll be... Kayla D'Souza coming into the game. She's going to replace California Mitchell. So I change into the central midfield as the other D'Souza will be entering the game as Kayla will now be entering. Just a couple players left it on the bench for Durham. Had to utilize, both teams had to utilize some subs early in the first half where they didn't normally expect to. And here it goes forward on the goal kick. Deere United likes to play that, play it short and utilize their defense. But Durham has just played a high press, high line, not letting them play short. And that's forcing them to just switch their formation, play it, not their usual style of game. So good job from Durham, just forcing Deere a little bit out of their comfort zone here in this match. As we got a cross going in court. Golan's corner, there's a player getting knocked down in the penalty area. As two players went up, Cats went out for battling with Disa, and she went down on the turf and the Dero faithful looking for your penalty. Didn't get one in the first half. And they're not getting one here once again. As that one's just that clear the way out for a goal kick. There's a player getting down in the penalty area. She's gonna go short with this one. Able to find a player. That was Copeland. Yes, Copeland's gonna hit this one up. Uh, she can't find Babbitt. Genius. Very some good composure. Passing now off to Livingston. Milgrain. Back it goes for Livingston. Sarkovic. Haven't had to say her name a lot this game. Last against FC London. She had her hands full all game long, but is able to shut down Jake Kovacevic. Hasn't been too busy to here today. But again, Durham still leads into this game as the play will resume. It's Tony. Finds Chung, though. Chung gets knocked away from her. And it's going to be settled in by Mutaj. That's a Brianna D'Souza. Hard. Babbitt. 
that player running up the middle. And that is Kayla to see but Babbitt though will foul the Dero player Golan. And yeah, it's gonna be a free kick just into Durham territory. Burke's gonna place one in short for Arcatoni. Gonna give it up now over to Bilgrain. Bilgrain gonna lob this one out. Headed away though by D'Souza. And it's gonna go over now into the park corner. So get kept in by Dunkor. Dunkor's gonna try she can spin around. She falls on top of the ball. And a late call there as Simmons is looking towards the assistant referee saying, your assistant should be the one making this call, not me. And said it's still gonna be a free kick double German. There goes, there's the header from Bettoni, but she's not able to get much on the down line. She was able to find a gap between the Durham defense, get a nice little header. There's not enough on the power, but she's going to win this ball right back for Dero, as they're going to con continue to try to attack this Durham goal. with a through ball a little bit too hard on that one and it's going to roll all the way out for a goal kick it looks like Durham United is getting ready to make yet another substitution here in just a few moments. <laughs> looks like they're going to wait to the next stoppage of play. The goal kick will be taken here from Churchy. Under some pressure. Simmons is able to slide and knock it away from her, but the referee says no. He got the ball. The whole bench is screaming that they got all ball here. And it's going to get brought back for a free kick. As here comes the substitution. And it's going to be the striker coming off here. And it's going to be Copeland coming off the field. And it's going to be Marissa Castellano, I believe, who is the player coming down to the field to play. We'll let you know in just a second. That is number 24. That is Castellano coming into the game. She'll be replacing on the striker role for Durham United. As that pass from Sarcevic isn't able to find her teammate. It's going to roll its way out for a throw in. Sports Engine is the official technology partner of Ontario Soccer and the league provider of sport life management tools for youth in amateur sports. Check out sportsengine.com to see how they can help keep your club running in stride on and off the pitch this season. That is Sports Engine. As Mackay will pick up the ball now for Giro. She's going to try to play a ball up just too far ahead for Chung, though, however. And there's Cassiano who handles that one. And that one, I think, got noticed by everybody in the complex as it's going to be brought back for a free kick. Referee Nick Vaginas is just telling the ladies to put the ball at the correct position. For a throw in now on the far side. It is Durham United leading Euro United here onto this game at the Lamro Complex in Scarborough, Ontario. We've played approximately 70 minutes so far into this one, still 20 minutes plus stop time. Don't imagine there'd be much stop time compared to the first half. That's still 20 minutes for Dero to see if they can see to find themselves one to put it into the back of the net. Nice little one-two from D'Souza utilizing her goalkeeper to get away from that pressure as they're going to try to work their way up the field. Simmons works her way forward and she's going to play a high ball up. Not a line too far though to get for Babin. and Patino's is going to let this one roll all the way out for a goal kick. And looks like she came up a little bit hobbling there. She did pick up an injury onto the left leg in the first half when she was trying to do a quick throw. Now it looks like on that one, she came up a little bit soft there watching that ball get past her. And it looked like maybe that leg might still be bothering her in this half. Trying to work her 
way backwards. Just has that ball roll away from her and it's going to go off the ball to Bowen. As Bowen's just waiting for the second ball to get off the field. Uh, the referee will be making sure on the correct position as well before taking the throw for goal length. Now she can't play Sony. That's not time for half to find Sony. As I want to block my car once again, that'll be another throw in for Deary United as they get a little bit closer towards the Derby United goal. High bounce there, able to be controlled though by Bilgrave. He's going to bring this one all the way back though and see if Livingston can carry this ball off the field. Jump over to Pizzoni. Right, so she can utilize her right foot, it looks like. Pass it forward and right there, a little bit of an instance that you try to remember there as in the defender. The pony had a very easy touch to make it towards her on her left foot, but she reached out with the right foot, had to go across the body to be able, able to slow down and utilize that right foot, which gave a little bit more time for the defense to come back. So if you're in a defender, you're seeing that, you're going to say, force her onto her left, more make her use her left foot if she doesn't want to favor and use it on a situation like that. Looks like it's going to be a substitution coming in soon for Deer United. I believe that's Chantel Parker getting ready to enter the game. That's going to be settling for Katz. Katz there's a challenge coming in. And Torture saying she got all ball there as the ball gets cleared away. Not happy with the referee's decision. Having some words for him. And the referee will call her back and just have a good discussion with her as the player Katz is able to go in forward and it's going to be a free kick just into Durham territory. And here comes the substitution now. Chessa Chung coming off of the gate, off the field of play. She, she leads the team goal so far down. She hasn't been able to find much into the gameplay here today. And we're going to look towards Chantal Parker. Who has got a lot Number of pace 45, down the wing. Some good Parker. physicality and good pace. And Parker will be looked at towards that striker position now. We'll see if she can work with Makai up top to get this goal for Dero. Somehow found his way for Makai, but they are able to get away with it is Ayotzi. Gives it back for Simmons, who's filled in for Ayotzi. A little bit of a push onto the back from Parker will get called. And it's going to come back for free kick. Durham United lead and Giro United here on the same goals from Bailey Copeland, Lisa Torcha, and Yara Simmons in the second half. She was able to pick up one, separating these two teams as the referee didn't see any advantage there. So he's just going to call this one back. Like well, you say, for Deere United, as a very young team, you take this as a learning tool for your future games coming in. Okay, how, what did Durham do? How were they able to get gold on us where no other team have been able to do so so far? What can you improve on? And like we said, this is the first of a very busy week for them. You, you tack this one up, forget it, and you move on to Tuesday's game. You can also say it's Unionville. So you want to finish this game strong. Give yourself some momentum. Give yourself some positivity to look for. So when you go against Unionville this Tuesday, you have some positivity to look for. And as there is Parker, she's going to balance forward. Drags down D'Souza. That is Kayla D'Souza. And it's going to be a free kick for Durham. He says she's going to take her time for us and this one on the field. Starchevich, she's able to head this one on. Finds D'Souza. D'Souza tried to pass it back, but that got read by Golan. Was able to get a touch on that one, but it finds the way back into the foot of Disa. And play will resume here for Durham as that through ball. Oof far behind Babbitt to be able for her to get to. Oh, 
Oh, and that throw there, Makai, looks like she waited for that one to go in front of her. But it gets knocked away. Probably should have taken a touch there just to keep that ball with her. As Ayotzi's going to hit this one up towards midfield. Motaj able to get the touch onto that one as here comes Castellano now. Castellano's pass can't find bad. A good job there from Livingston and Sartrevich tracking back. Shut down that upcoming attack from Durham United. As this one will go up to four throw. Make sure to tune in on www.league1ontario.com each week to see which men's and which women's game will be the single live streamed match of the game brought to you. So I believe it's Toronto Skills who will be on the men's matchup tomorrow. So make sure to tune in to the website, see who's playing. If those are the teams you're interested in, make sure to tune in for that match and make sure to watch all your League One Ontario action on the website and the YouTube channel as well to see every single match recorded and uploaded onto the next day. Throwing will go down the line, not too sure if Simmons will be able to get that one. She is able to, and it will be a corner kick as Simmons slid out, so did Duncor to be able to prevent that. It hits off a of Duncor last, and it will go for a corner kick. Our third corner kick of this half. Sino. Iotzi being the player to take it on to the near side of the field. Different player here, I believe that's Torchia. Takes it on the far side to get that in swing. This one's going to go around the penalty mark. Iotzi jumps up for that one, but it goes past her. Lataj battling. Keep this one in with her. And Parker is able to hop in and try to win this one back for her team. Golan thought it was their throw. And Durham's going to try and see if they can make them pay, catching them on the flat foot. As Motaj went in high and got under that one a little bit, might have been better off to take it with the left foot, I feel. But she hit, got right under that one and hits this one high and out towards four goal kicks. Sarcevich. Into the middle for Pizzoni. It's only not able to turn away. Referee will allow play to continue. There's a through ball high in the air trying to find Makai, but Iotzi is there. She's going to hit this one up for Simmons. Iotzi making a nice overlap run, but I got read there by Vilgrain expecting that pass. She's able to get in the way of that one. It was hit, and it will hit off her for throwing. Nice little throw down the line once again. Simmons. She's been a Huge impact substitution for Durham United. Once again, finding her way in free onto the wing and setting a cross opportunity. But now here comes Jiro the other way. But Parker not able to get to that one as it'll be knocked right back into their own territory. Oh, a great touch. Trying to get this one back onto the run of Golan. Golan still has it on her. Golan's going to try a looping one. Uh, not enough power onto that one as she loses the shin pad once again. Maybe you got to take a look at uh, some tape for the future games, but it's a good opportunity there from Golan. She loops that one, unfortunately it curled right towards the waiting hands of Patrizzi, able to catch that one. That's some good positive movements coming out here on this left side with Golan and Cats. down one and they're gonna keep this one in as we are just about 10 minutes left to go here into this game. Durham United does lead zero three to nothing here in this League One Ontario women's broadcast on ww.league1ontario.com as Bowen tries to play one two with Burke. Burke does well to keep this one down and now she's gonna play down the line for Parker. This is what we like to see from Parker but it's offside however and she's gonna get called back. She disagrees with this one. And it looked awfully close from this point of view, but again, the referee always has the best vantage point on that one. So it's going to get brought back for a free kick. Okay, so taking our lovely time right now to set this one up. You got to do it. When you got the lead, take as many seconds as you can off that clock. Feel comfortable, slow the pace down. You don't want to give Deere United 
any momentum and by slowing the play down, taking time, it just puts the foot off the gas pedal a little bit and gets it off as Patinos will be able to get into through ball as Babbitt was running towards that one. Now Golan's going to try to see if she can get to a counterattack. She's going to work with Batoni in the middle of the field. That pass though can't find Micaiah as D'Souza read that one. She's going to get it, hit it over to Kayla D'Souza. And that touch though can't find Babbitt as Sarcevic is going to work with Livingston in their own end. Looks like Dero United is getting ready to make yet another substitution here. As the game is winding down here, get some fresh legs onto the field to play, give themselves a little bit of a run around. Like I said, three games this week. Got to make sure you conserve the energy as well. After a ball, a little bit too strong though. Gets Castellano, and here comes the substitution. For Dior United, and it's going to be Adrian Devlin coming into the game. And it will be Jasmine and Vilgrain coming out. So Vilgrain out of the game and coming in will be Adrian Devlin. He wasn't on the roster in their previous game against the C1. Newer face here for myself. So we'll have to see if she comes into the central midfield. And will she be able to work with her other substitute Tony in the central midfield and create some opportunities for their striker? Rain starting to pick up a little bit here at the Lamar Sports Complex. As you, looks like we're getting a bit of a miss here as the umbrella will start to pop up with from all the fans. Comes a high looping ball from IOC, headed it away by Sarcevic. Second ball still bounce heading around. Sarcevic once again gets a clearance, but can't get it that far enough away as Portia. Tries again from distance, and this will be an easy grab for Patinas. Almost clear club what happened on the first one as it hit off her, the wall. She got it just on the end of the air, and it struck the distance. And the defender kind of blocked it, and of course, it's just correct. And that's how they got that Like she had to that one up with the Durham player. The referee says, No, I was right here. This is an opportunity on that one. And it's going to go for a next. Great. Starting to come down now. Scarborough has. It's going to go down the middle. I also down the line. Here comes Simmons. Another blitzing. Creates a speed, but it will be Donkor who gets it out first. Donkor though can't clear it away as Ayotzi puts his one back into the penalty area. Can't clear it away, and Castellano didn't get a much out of that one. They almost made the zero defense pay, and that's what you noticed so far. And that's what happened on the third goal. A little bit of miscommunication. More of a you got it, no, you got it, no, you got it. And it finds out neither of them got it. Castellano just came into the middle and said, thank you. For that opportunity, though, she wasn't able to make them pay. Nolan can't get anywhere for it, and good forward coming in from Babbitt. D'Souza is going to take it up and hit it down to the field for Babbitt to run on to. Livingston taking no chance, and just going to hit this one out of play and allow her team to retreat. Hard down the line for Babbitt. Abbott tries to cross it, I believe it's fourth throwing. Yes, it is. Just at the edge of the corner flag. Now, it looks like a foul throw-in. And the assistant referee does agree, though. And it's going to be a quick zero throw, and they're going to take it in quickly. Devlin, Devlin, first back, right away from Mackay. Mackay plays it down to the right side. Here comes Dunkor running all the way up with speed. Dunkor is going to continue to run it for her. Can she get across? No, she cannot. She runs out of space. Dunkor trying to get a little bit closer towards the Durham United goal before playing the low cross, but they weren't able to get it forward. 
And he goes up four tick. Tries to work in forward and then it goes out four throw. She wasn't able to turn around. Second opportunity for Simmons first down four. Getting some help here from Devlin. And down four. Falls on the turf. Simmons puts her hands up saying, I didn't do anything. Referee says, no, you didn't, but it's still throwing. As like I said, the rain and the wind is going right towards us. These things are home. So we're doing our best to keep and make sure you guys can see at home all the action that is going on. As a nice little job from Parker. He's going to work for Parker from I don't know if it's a good deflection. Yes, it did. So we have corner kick for zero. Is this their opportunity? Are they able to break the goose? We got two players coming. But Tony Burke is running in. Burke is going to play it. No, it looked like they were going to play that one in short for a second, but. No, they'd rather take an in-swing kick nice instead. Utilize the left-pointed take of Burke. He's going to go towards the far post. Headed back into danger. And D'Souza, though, able to clear that one away. Vittoni try to hit it back towards Burke. Burke again. Try to pass that one back, but it was intercepted. Now Durham's trying to go on a counterattack the other way. And they're not able to as the player does get brought down, trying to hustle it forward. And be a free kick. But a nice little job there coming on the far side. I believe that was Golan who headed it back into danger into the middle of the area off that set piece, but no one was there. And but the Susa able to clear it away. Some good foot coming up from her to clear that one aside for Durham. We gotta be very impressive. Like to this Durham defense here today. They lost the player early in Harvey. In their center back position, they have to adjust and putting a player like Ayotzi who was on the left wing back to a left back position to counter it. And they've succeeded very well regardless uh, with some good composure in that back line. Having great hustle. Takes away from Bitsoni. Burke has to come in and help on her teammate. But it will be Mutash who comes out with it. She doesn't get a good chip on that one. Once play a through ball. Puts her hand, she put her hand up right as soon as she touched it. Just didn't mean to hit it like that. And it will go right to Coutinho. That through ball, and that's going to go behind Golan. Trying to get held up by Burke, but Babbage again coming to come to see two hustling down the line, shoulder to shoulder, battling the two of them. Burke able to win it, and said the referee says a corner kick. The two players came in with speed, hustled and shoulder to shoulder, but the referee must have saw a touch onto the Dero player of some sort, and it is a corner kick. I also see we've seen her take these kicks on the near side. She's going to do a little in swing. Maybe even not if you're bad, but just come and play short to hold it into the corner. As there's just a few little time left, but they are able to get it through. And Makai is there to clear the side for yet another corner kick. Driven one finds way to Simmons. Simmons trying to dance with the ball, try to find some help, but it gets cleared away. And now Dero is going to try to see if he can go with it with Parker. Cats has a run down the right side with Devlin. Here comes Devlin battling with it, but D'Souza will beat her to that one. And Devlin's going to get called for the nut onto the back of the Durham defender. And we'll get free kick. With the spin line, Durham United now advanced to the Two additional minutes here, and that's 
game. They're going to still be towards the upper end of the center system. About six plates on the center table. A very strong start for this young team. A lot of upcoming games. So we've got against Unionville and Oakville this week. Standing at four on to the right side. Parker can't reach on to that one as Sousa is going to cut that one forward. Parker, though, able to get it away from her. She's got two players onto the edge of the penalty area, screaming for the ball. Parker still dancing with it, but can she get rid of the ball? No chance. As Iosi is going to work with Parker, able to take it away from her. Parker did a great job holding onto that one, just couldn't find the work. As that ball gets got held up by the wind. That's the team that's almost right now for that one. A Babbitt will get a forwarder. Just looking at Lucas for Castellano. And Sofino is there. Castellano trying to dive to reach onto that header. Nails to get to that one as the can roll it down. Maybe with an opportunity for one more chance here for Euro United with the zone. Sony carries this one over half. She's going to hop it through on the left side. There's a through ball in for Golan. Golan's going to set up to this one in play. And she almost got it. Rolls it off of the left foot, however. So she all took over the corner flag by accident. Maybe a little bit of frustration there. But it will go up towards the goal kick. And we're in the final moments here for Durham. Maybe just one more play on. Looks like the referee says no. And there is the full time here at the Lemmer Sports Complex. 